And finally, the last of the, the delivery channels is the performance contracting channel. Now, performance contracting involves very large energy saving projects with very key specific milestones and won't be covered any further in this presentation. So to summarize the funding, the ESCO process for projects greater than one megawatt of energy savings requires detailed design and proposal submission to ESCOM, which is then evaluated by their technical team and funding is given appropriately. The funding is based on the project evaluation and often funds a significant amount of the capital expenditure, but very seldom funds anything more than 80% of the capital expenditure. As I mentioned, the ESCO process can be used on a large variety of energy saving projects, such as lighting, process optimization, building management systems, HVAC systems, and water heating, just to name a few. These will all be lumped together under one project. Then the next to speak about is the standard offer program. The standard offer program is for projects between 100 kilowatts and 1 megawatt in size. How this works is ESCOM pays you back a set rate of 42 cents per kilowatt hour saved and the payment process is 40 percent in implementation and 20 percent per annum for three years. Now it's key to note that this 100 percent payment is not 100 percent of the capital expenditure but rather 100% of the amount ESCOM will buy back from you in energy. I'll cover that in the next slide. The standard product program is for, is for projects less than 100 kilowatts in size and can be as small as 1 kilowatt. The funding is based on the standard value per item and the payment is 100% of the rebate on installation will be paid back to the client. So if we go through the standard offer funding example, say after measurement and verification, now let me touch on measure, measurement and verification very quickly. Measurement and verification is a process where ESCOM appoints one of the universities to examine the energy saving project and to say how much energy has actually been saved. So to look at the kilowatt hour saving of 500,000 kilowatt hours per annum, ESCOM will buy that electricity back from you for three years. So they will then buy back 1.5 million kilowatt hours of electricity at a rate of 42 cents a kilowatt hour. This gives a total payment price of 630,000 rand. The initial payment price that you will then be given is 40% of that. So upon project completion, you'll be given 252,000 Rand and then three more annual payments of 126,000 Rand to give you a total funding for your standard offer project. Right, the next area I will cover is energy management tools. Tools. Very briefly, energy management tools are new age technology tools that can be used to reduce energy consumption in a facility. One of the most popular new brands of tools are building management systems that allow buildings to become smart, intelligent buildings that are controlled automatically. This automatic control is used to ensure that systems only run when they are needed to run and that they operate as efficiently as possible. Energy monitoring systems such as permanent meters, online metering or real-time metering and alert systems are one of the first steps in an energy implementation, energy efficiency implementation. Not only does a system like this allow you to measure and to monitor your energy and cost savings, but also gives you real-time insight into how facilities are using energy. This real-time insight is critical in identifying things like peak demand and uh, power factor issues that could happen in a facility. By examining and watching how a facility uses energy, building operators and facility operators 
can take proactive steps rather than reactive steps to reduce energy consumption. So let's have a look at a couple of case studies. The first case study we will look at, that of a commercial building. This commercial building shows that the significant load in the building is HVAC. This is very standard for a facility in South Africa as we are in a very cooling environment. Lighting, often around 20 to 30 percent of a commercial building energy consumption is shown, as well as office equipment and water heating. This building here shows a significant amount of energy to the other category as this was a broadcasting house which had large power equipment to broadcast television and radio signals. Once the energy efficiency audit was undertaken, uh, recommendations were made and uh, an energy management action plan was drawn up that enabled a 27 percent kilowatt hour reduction in the facility. This 27 percent kilowatt hour reduction equated to approximately 190,000 rand per year saving with a total investment cost of around 420,000 rand. Uh, this was 377 tons of CO2 per year and had a payback of just under two years with an ROI of 45%. Some of the interventions recommended were occupancy sensors to control the basement parking lights, direct new technology replacement to replace old inefficient lighting, and control measures to ensure that the HVAC system only operated when it was required as it was found that the HVAC operated quite a lot at night where small individual units were left on by staff. The five year project life, if you want to look at it like that, shows that over five years nearly 1.8 million rand will be saved from an initial investment of just over 400,000 rand. This takes into account the significant energy increases that ESCOM has proposed. The next case study I'll speak about is an industrial environment. Again, it's seen that lighting still shows a significant portion to the energy consumption, with equipment being high, as well as HVAC. This is not your typical industrial environment, as the HVAC is quite a high percentage. This is due to the fact that it was a temperature controlled and temperature sensitive environment, so cooling was a big part of their energy expense. By conducting the energy efficiency audit and looking at various interventions, a total saving of 19.5 percent of the kilowatt hours could be achieved, or a saving of 762 tons of CO2 per annum. The financial saving per year was just under a quarter of a million rand, with most of the paybacks falling around the three-year category. This again shows a very good ROI with a payback of just over three years and a project value at the end of the three years of just under 1.4 million rand in energy savings. So if you remember anything from today, it is that energy savings lead to real, tangible financial savings that can be implemented in any building or any facility. And it's key that when going on your energy efficiency route that you need to begin measuring it, because if you don't measure it, you can't manage it. So questions and answers, please. Right, we have our first question. I have been approached by various ESCOs and product vendors who have offered to conduct an energy audit for free. Are these audits the same as you have described? Right, many ESCOs in South Africa are product vendors. So they have become ESCOs in order to ask, access ESCOM funding in order to get rebates on their products to sell to clients and customers. While they do provide a service, the audits that they 
generally provide to a customer are focused at selling their products and goods. It's therefore important to have an independent third party to examine all areas of energy consumption and not just ad hoc devices to see how the, the largest and most financially beneficial energy savings can be achieved in a facility. Right. Our second question. Can you include feasibility of renewable energy in an audit uh, if I want to consider PV or wind? The answer to that is yes, you can definitely include feasibility studies for renewable energy in an energy efficiency audit. And uh, an energy efficiency audit actually gives you very good insight into being able to conduct a feasibility study for renewable energy as it identifies your loads as well as your uh, it identifies your electrical loads as well as energy efficiency opportunities so that you can optimize the size of your renewable energy system. Right. We have a question, what does a typical energy efficiency audit cost? An energy efficiency audit cost varies from facility to facility based on complexity. If you're looking at your standard commercial property, uh, the energy efficiency audit costs are generally around one month's electricity bill uh, as for that facility. The industrial side is slightly more complex and certain and product uh, and is, is more complex and uh, site visits are needed in order to conduct and give a proper quote. Another question we have is what is the minimum amount of monthly energy spend that you believe would justify an energy efficiency audit? An energy efficiency audit can be conducted on any size facility and that the minimum that I would say in my opinion of a site would be around about a 15,000 rand a month electricity bill as this will allow for substantial energy savings that uh, make a difference and will pay for the consulting fees. Right, I have another question here. Is there any truth in ESCOM reducing the payback fees by 50% for buying back electricity with the latest price increase? Uh, I'm assuming this is a question to do with the standard offer program and uh, the latest presentation that I had from ESCOM had no truth to this rumor at all as they've actually increased their payback fees from 34 cents a kilowatt hour to 42 cents a kilowatt hour with effect to the 1st of April. So they've actually increased their latest uh, payback fees on the standard offer. Right, a question, if GCX were to recommend installation of BMS, for example, does GCX provide a list of recommended service providers? Yes, GCX does provide a recommended list of service providers and uh, will identify which ones are most suited to a facility so that the most tangible and real energy savings can be achieved. Right. Another question we have, many companies feel that carbon calculators can be downloaded and will suffice as an audit. How do you work around this? Carbon calculators will give you good insight into what your carbon emissions are as a result of your energy in a facility. However, as each building and facility is different, it is critical that a qualified and experienced person examines energy consumption and energy consuming systems to ensure that the same levels of productivity are achieved and that all the health and safety requirements are still met. A simple computer program won't have the same effect as a human being's design which looks at each individual system independently. Right. Are there 
Any further? Yes, there's another question. With the ESCOM funding options in place, are companies that qualify 